coming out. Thank you. <laughs> that plant needs water. <laughs> <laughs> Go bye bye. That's not what I was looking at. I was thinking about something totally different. No, if you water my head, it's not going to grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Bigger one. <laughs> and this is nothing but the report that then you can pile. It's all the township. It's our cost for sealing and, and overlaying, and, and then it's the township's cost, it's all compiled and then it's given to the state. That's probably the first time it's ever had all the individual townships in there. It means we went a different way this time than collected the data. So what you're saying is this was costing this, this to, is just to keep and maintain the roads yeah. in this county, all of them. This was last year, was it? Yes, this was 2010. I see you got 50 miles, about 55 miles, 50 and a half miles are sealed and seven overlays. And, oh, yeah. The, well, seven full miles. That's probably what happened. So close to $2 million to maintain all the roads in the county? Well, that was our cost with oil, yeah. labor, equipment. It was one point seven. One point seven three six, and a total one nine two nine. Hi, how are you? So I think it's two million for the county, and then another one point. Two and a half of the townships. Is, mm -hmm. is that what this is telling me? Right. Well, this is this is ours. The first thing is that's ours. One point seven. And this the, the, the townships is one point two. So okay. Well, we might be able to throw a little money at them. Well, when you start putting your equipment costs on there, right? Yeah. That's a word. I have a question along those lines. Just, my little head was thinking this. Sure. Okay. 
And you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the need for really for you guys to have a new plan and then look at your facilities, put a new building, maybe mm -hmm. moving your offices in this building. I don't know if this is an either or situation or you know, I just kinda of wanted your thoughts on this whole thing. Without say spending a whole lot of money here and then having more money to spend there and what are your priorities and you know kind of like, well, I like an overall the perfect world you know, so I mean, we've dealt with it for dealt with which situation forever. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, what situation mean, would you prefer to for us to address the truck, the truck and the tanker, or or your building and office? Which is going to be more beneficial to the county? Probably the truck and the trailer. In all honesty, I mean, you know, yes. Which would you prefer as a department head? Well, we've dealt with the other for, since I've been. I mean, we make it function. Yeah. Do you have an right. idea what kind of cost we'd be talking about if we, if we did build it? Build, have you explored it at all? No. It was explored in the mid 80s. Probably early 90s. Well, we're going to have to deal with. And the annex is done with moving offices and doing, you know. Yeah. And it would be nice to have a, a, a plan, an overall strategy of what we're going to do and where. Sure. And if we're going to build a building or an office down there, you know, it's going to have to be part of our thought process right now. Okay. Well, I just thought it was something we ought to discuss before we made any decision even on this. I, maybe this doesn't have anything to do with it. Maybe there are different funds, different, I'm not sure how that works budget wise. Can you help me on here? But I mean, your building department, you've got your capital approval fund, right? Wouldn't even come out of his budget necessarily. Does this come out of your budget or is this a special? This, this would come out of what? Probably. Yeah, special machine. And a building wouldn't do that. I mean, it would be something to do with your budget. Which wouldn't have anything to do with your budget necessarily because you don't have a capital improvement. Fund. So there are really two different subjects for the entire capital. One isn't really related to the other. I don't think that helps me. What are the price of those? Um, originally they were on $14,950. I got three talking to the price. Is it what year is it? It's a 79. Not new, is it? No, but it's 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 probably in a little better shape than the one we have. Than the one we have. What's the capacity? Seventy-five hundred gallons is what it's rated at. When you go to haul it, you can probably haul sixty. With a day cab, you can haul sixty-two, sixty-three. Depends on what you're working on. Because sealing oil is usually a little lighter than mixing oil. Do you think this would be beneficial to the Well, $600 a pop, $620 a pop to haul oil. I mean, yeah, that seems exorbitant. I'm just wondering if you couldn't. Find and I mean, that, that cost is going up, it looks like, because diesel fuel is going up. And you will use existing help? Yes. The only thing you're going to have to do is purchase a truck. But let's give you two to haul in, right? Yes. You said the other day you thought you'd keep up all right. Yes, I think we, we could. could just sign it. Yeah, we can make it work. Well, I'm not. Is that oil powder hot? Is that it? Or the other hot? Yeah, they use oil. The CR, the <clears> oil's <throat> usually shipped around 100, and anywhere from 150 to 170. This, this is an insulated tag. This yes, is, it's insulated. Okay, so yeah. I keep it in it. Yes, it, you'll keep it. In, look in, in fact, it'll keep overnight. I mean, we have sent a truck out on, okay. on, on the day before and then left it in the tank overnight. It didn't look. It didn't look. It was like 12,000 is just for the trailer. That's for the truck. Did you have to buy a truck to pull the trailer? Just thinking if you had a trailer that somebody would pull it for you. We talked about that. Well, I mean, all kinds of at least we have a trailer now. It's 
The truck is not near as critical because trucks you can find a lot easier than the trailers. It does seem that way. Which pleasure? You said he picked up the for What's the new call? Oh, 80? 90? <laughs> I did price in the one day truck. <laughs> it would scare me. I bet. Sometimes when you when we get to see them, they won't end up because sometimes when we didn't have a truck before, sometimes that first load would double back and be the third or the fourth load, and so you'd have a lag time in there. We may set out on the road for two hours to try to go to bed. Yeah. I mean, well, then the what's the irritating part? Then you end up paying overtime that day because everything gets pushed back. And if you don't, and, get, and there's really no control. If you don't get it off, you get to charge them too for the marriage, don't you sit there? Yeah, that's they'll try that, but if they're ever late, it doesn't work that way. So sometimes you have to argue a little bit. Yeah. And we haven't had a marriage cost for yeah. uh, it used to be a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They used to run it right down to the minute. They like that. <clears throat> well, I would entertain a motion. Purchase this tanker trailer. Well, I'll be able to pay for stuff real long. I said it. it won't blow you up out there. You should be able to keep your loads. Not get the burden. Just didn't you actively look for a tractor? Yeah, we'll start. And I'll and I'll look into this other deal. I, oh. I guess I can see. Um, just right now. I can see us buying the trailer now and the truck next year, something like that. Might even be a good approach. Yeah. I don't know where our funds are right now, yeah. but I just can't help but think that you can't, especially this time of year, can't find somebody with a truck that's looking for little work. You know, that could help. You know, I just well, I hate taking money out of private hands and putting it in public hands. If you've got somebody who does it, yeah. is willing, willing and capable and can do it, sure, you know, for a good price. For the most price. of the but most, most of them have the trailer like from that. around, from, from anybody around here. Now, if we bought the trailer, we could, you know, you hire anybody. Try, try to find that's, them. That's my point. Yes. Yeah, nobody's going to have a trailer, but there's a lot of trucks around. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, often looking for work this time of year. So, go ahead, Okay, uh, I'll make a motion. You said 12,000? Mm hmm. Good. And we wish our trailer, trailer. Okay, it's been moved and second. All I've ever say aye. Uh, aye. Aye, the trailer. And then the only other thing I got in mind to talk in with Joe about, we've got a little stretch of road out here. It used to be a little 50. Now you're by Kent Rickson, so we need to. It's not even a half a mile stretch. When they closed it, they closed it down with this driveway. And really, we need to move it back to the east where it turns and goes down this township road. Um, if, I mean, you maintain this up in front one individual. And I talked to him about it out there, though. He didn't have a problem. So we're going to bring it up. Okay. No, it's already been grounded. Yeah, the, um, 
He was wondering how to be a belter. I know that belter. I think it's terrible. Yeah. He was happy about that. Yeah, he wasn't pleased. He wasn't very happy at the start of it. But, but after, after he got he done, done yes. well, at the start, but after he got done, he was. Uh, he got, 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 I'm sure it worked out that had holes in the fault. Yes, yeah, so and he even admitted it. He was admitted it. exciting thing that happened is I had my car and technical assistance review and that's the one where they come out and they assess your readiness for mass dispensing in case we have a, an issue where we would have to set up a mass dispensing site and I don't know if you remember but I've talked to you before that um, Barton and Person County both had theirs and they quote failed miserably unquote. I got a 58. I don't think that's so bad. I got a 69. Oh, that's great. 100. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't have a 69. I don't think that's so bad. I think pretty good. Because there's stuff on there I didn't do, and I'm not going to do. Like, if I call volunteers, I'm supposed to have a log. Of what time I call them? What time they call back? Nobody got me that I'm not do There's going to be some things I'm never going to do. Um, and this is just an informational thing. Um, County health rankings came out the news. Overall, we're 80 out of 98. Is that the good inside is bad? And that is because what? We're Access to health care, um, poverty. We do have good air. We rank, what, 30th out of 98? Because some counties don't report. So there's not 105 counties. This shows Stafford County. Kansas and then I think a national average, right? Yeah. So and you can see where the uh, wind is if you want to look it up and look at the other counties. Too good on sexually transmitted diseases or adult no, obesity either. No, so. obesity's bad, smoking's bad. Um, anyway. So what is the point of all this actually? Is it just something that somebody to? does this? It's not a bureaucratic. Somebody got paid to put all this together. Yeah, so, so you just go to the website and pick this up and job security. Make me feel like and then if you do a community assessment. Uh, it's not helpful. I mean, that, no. it's, it's not helpful for me as a, a decision maker. It's also not helpful when it's like 
promoting See, the like, county. I have know. to have that information if we do a county health assessment mm -hmm. because then we'll have to decide on some something to work on to make the county better. So, Let's see. Hmm. The health departments go to accreditation and you have to do county health which, assessment. Which we are, right? right so that's, that's the hospital the has to do one too, so I talked to them the other day about my duplicate work. Right. Why can't we work together? My bad. Some of that stuff that's blank, there wasn't enough information to report. So. And I know on the health indicators I looked at, like binge drinking, it was reported on the last one. Um, there's another one on there that I thought was reported. Oh, like um, motor vehicle vest per 100,000. Mm -hmm. that's, that's blank on that one, right? Yes. And I think it was reported on the last one. So, so if it's not reported, what does it do? Where does it make it? God knows we have enough of those, don't we? Motor What's vehicle. that? They are vehicle deaths and stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's likely on that one. No larger than that. For cats, though, but they're not necessarily residents either. Well, I don't know, but see, I don't know if, if uh, do we take the head if they crash and stuff? That's my question. Do you think? Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's been my question, too. Nobody seems to know. In years of life lost, you know, if a young person gets killed, they take that and extrapolate out the years of life lost mm -hmm. and then we have to take a hit on that too, but I don't know if it's if uh, the resident of like Greenville County comes through here and gets killed, if we take the hit on those years of life lost in Greenville County, that's what I think we know. So how important is this survey? I don't know. You can do it if you want. <laughs> Hope it doesn't have a lot of drill in it. What? 19 pages long. 20 pages long. You've got nothing better to do, right? All right. When you get that down, I've got about four farm There's surveys. There's a stamp on there. 61 cent stamp on it. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, one other thing. Um, I have to do some maintenance on my lights at the health department. The light fell apart in the, in the lobby. And I can get two lights for six, $60 a piece because we'd like to have a match. You know? Absolutely. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do So we have a light. Well, we have one light out there. Right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Don't want you. you working in the dark. I'll have it. Steve? <coughs> And the uh, the uh, Homeland Security and uh, something S S C said uh, Homeland Security Evaluation and Exercise Plan. Wish three day event that certainly shouldn't have been any longer than two days, but <laughs> just in case, I think the state was required by the by the feds to have, have it be three days. So it was three days. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have kind of a water blanket kind of a brush of filling all the information they need to do for exercises to meet their requirements. Uh, busy day yesterday, wildland fires. I for see about that. eight hours straight. We were out. I see the fire truck on that Every single unit. Uh, it kind of started uh, was it Friday or Saturday. But I, I don't know what your guys' pleasure is on some of that. Uh, you know, we we got a lot of complaints when we we had a big fire out here south of Maxville, and then we got a lot of complaints because we shut it down because we had all of our all of our trucks, every truck just crashed into the fire. We even had uh, oh, and crash. so we shut it down for a bit. So everybody's coming down in the deadline. The deadline's coming up for so But they were on the burning line. Yeah, to get their CRP requirements in. So they, they were pretty much irate with us that we shut it down. Uh, so we opened it back up when we probably had 15 or 20 before sundown. 
Well, then we kind of paid the price yesterday because all of those stoked back up with the winds and we fought six consecutive fires. The one, again, I don't think any of them probably, there was much we could do about it um, other than the one, the one that was pretty big. And it, it's a matter of opinion whether, you know, whether he took the precautions that he should. Uh, our opinion was that he didn't. Um, took some precautions, but um, really not enough for that. And it's a desolate area out there, and and brutal on trucks. I mean, we broke a couple of mirrors on trucks. We, um, it, it's just brutal on trucks. I mean, there's hills and um, hedgerows that are football field deep. Um, so I, I don't know what your pleasure is on some of them. If if you want me to uh, to send a responsibility, but the responsibility for that fire is going to be expensive because we went back on it two times and. We probably had 20 trucks out there at one point, so. Um, but I don't have much budget for salaries. And it's going to get eaten up pretty fast if I got to send 20 trucks to folks as fires that. It, you know, some some fires where you have an extreme danger if it gets out of hand is is much more important than others. You know, some if it gets out of hand, it it'll burn to the next roadway. But out there, there's. There's very little roadways out there. Where were you at? <clears throat> About five miles straight south of Maxville. Oh boy, yeah. It gets really wild in her. Yeah, it's really wild out there. So I, I, I don't know what the answer is to that, but I, I'm told that we go out there pretty often. So. But this started as a CRP burn? Um, yeah, control burn, yeah. Was it CRP or? Was I guess it was CRP. I'm not sure what the nature of the. I mean, it was control burn, but to burn off the land. But I guess I don't know if that's all CRP or. If that's, no, it could have been pasture. Here. Yeah. yeah. So I. Uh, I don't know. I don't, mean, know, what, I don't mean, know what the answer is. But they, they called in. And it was. It was the permission to burn. It, it was permission to burn. Yes. And and they just didn't. Well, I, I think on some of them, you know, even 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 what we ask, and, and I don't know that they did that completely, but even some of them, I I, I think you almost need to take even bigger precautions. Um, I think they themselves wish they would have this time because I mean they, they tore up a loader trying to assist with the uh, the firefight, and uh, they, they weren't without expenses of their own, but uh, I think you really got to put some some significant uh, barriers on some of those fires of that sort because once they get out of control it's it's off to the races with everything you got to try to stop it. So I <coughs> one of my favorite subjects, you know that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it that's uh, that's that. Uh, well was there property damage or was it all just grassland? That one was grassland. Now we had one, um, and we'll, we'll be following up with some investigation of the one south of St. John here. Um, not, a, not a lot of property damage, but, but certainly a, a set fire. Because there's no reason for it to burn. It was, he had some, some uh, large outbuildings, he had uh, tires, he had oil barrels, he had, uh, it, it was quite a fire for a while. Uh, but there was uh, the, that he's got an abandoned house. It came in as an abandoned house on fire. It, it did have some, uh, a, a little bit of fire damage, but mostly it looked like just from the embers flying over to it. And luckily, the wind changed directions just about that time, and or would have burned the house down too. We wouldn't have been able to stop it. Um, but that one was was certainly uh, uh, certainly an arson fire. Somebody said it. Because there was no power. To, well, there was some power over to the on the house, but and, unless and, and maybe I'm speaking out, uh, out of order there, because I mean there was power, some power lines, and I suppose with the wind maybe did throw some sparks down. But you've been having more species sparks lately. lately we, we've had some some hay bales have been set on fire, and uh, yeah, we've had a few around. So uh, that's that. I uh, I can kind of put together uh, um, 
we got out of there about 10.30 last night and started at about 2. Like that was our first call at 2 and we did the last one in quarters at 10.30. So I'll put together kind of a okay. summation of that one call. Um, the others that are just, just high winds, stoked to back up. Um, just one other permission to buy, and, and we did sell, we were able to sell a couple of our uh, big nozzles that were brand new that we had bought at some time that really we have no use for. We just, uh, when we was going through all the, the supplies that, you know, once we got them all gathered up, we had a couple large bore nozzles that uh, we don't have adequate water supply. Even none of the cities in Stafford County have the adequate water supply to supply those nozzles. So uh, we, we did get, uh, I think, $750 a piece out of those, so we should be getting checks coming with them. But this is just, uh, I'm just asking permission to, uh, to put a, a, a monitor um, uh, nozzle on uh, one of the bigger trucks at, over at Stafford. They use that truck, uh, they have a position nozzle that they can kind of, it's on so you're not actually holding something. It's actually mounted on the truck, and they, they, um, they've got one on one side, but um, you're not always, you know, you're not always fighting fire off that side. So they, they want to put it one on the other side, which I think uh, they really like the way the other one works. We got several bids, and this was the this was the best. So you've sold a couple of sixty twenty three. Just got actually got out of it. Bob, this one here back, right? Yeah, yeah, we're actually. Still uh, accept the purchase of this nozzle. I second motion. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. aye. You need a copy of this. That's all I got. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Good luck. All right. <laughs> Okay, Patricia. Oh, we need some good news now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bab, you introduced yourself to Steve while he's here. Steve, we know each other well. You know each other well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, I just we to... communicate back and forth. Over yeah, but this is a real person now. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Yeah. Each other. Well, I had to compliment him. Uh, he has a blog. I don't know if you guys are kind of picky, but he has this great blog, and I love going to it because he puts. Some what he's doing, so I know what he's doing all the time. She keeps track of me. <laughs> I keep track of it. It's, it's, it's got fires on there and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, we got another one there, pretty good one. And I got a little, a little raccoon that was, well, he's a pretty big raccoon, actually. He decided to, to hightail it out of the fire area there south of St. John. <laughs> so I kind of caught him on video. Did you got video? Than, yeah. yeah. Well, did you jump, cool. did you jump in the truck? Uh, I was glad that his tail was on fire because he was headed right for the house. I thought, oh my gosh, somebody shoot him. <laughs> well, you guys, it's been three months since I've met with you last. A lot of change on our website. I, I think, uh, and this is... Uh, it doesn't print too good. If you go out to the website, it looks different, but this is just the home page, and uh, it's just the background colors, but I thought we should start off by uh, kind of going through, we made a lot of changes out here, uh, and kind of explaining what we've got going on now. Uh, this picture, I'll, I'll start off by saying I show this website around to the people in Kansas City, and the uh, reaction I get is, wow. They just, the picture, of course, we're just like, right. <laughs> like, like, smile on. I don't care about the rest of it. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, wait a I'm minute. I'm done. You're not done now. No, no. You don't get a quick but now. I showed him to, actually, a real estate lady, and she pulled it up, and she just goes, wow, Pat, that is awesome. And I said, well, would you like to visit or move to this county? She goes, definitely. So this, so we have, so we have a great picture, and I don't know who did this, and this person should get credit on the website. I think Ted Lubacks. But Carolyn, Carolyn done sent me all the pictures, and I need to get back with her, and we need uh -oh. to get. Here's Carolyn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. oh my gosh. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Come in. So 
Yeah, they should get to credit. We should, so I just need to get, I was talking about all the great pictures we have. We need to give the people credit maybe on the website. Yeah. Under the pictures. But anyway. And I think, I think and it's Ted, Ted Eubanks took this picture. I got that from Jerry Seagraves. You did? Mm -hmm. Really? Because mm -hmm. yep. on the Wetlands and Wildlife brochure, I think it was Ted Eubanks. Unless Jerry got it from Ted Eubanks. I don't know. <laughs> Jerry, right. Jerry provided it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, that's, that's Well, anyway, the, so the reaction is really great. So we have, and then the, so that's great, but the other good news is, claim we have people coming to our website, which was my goal was to get mm -hmm. people to look mm -hmm. at our great pictures. We needed people visiting. We had it on Friday, last Monday, a week ago, we had a spike on this website of 70 people a day visiting. So that's a lot of people, and of course we want it to be hundreds of people mm -hmm. coming today, but we're, we're doing good. Um, so I thought we'd walk through, uh, I've worked with Carol and a lot of other people, uh, and we've added some cool stuff. The, um, we've always had a home page, we've always had a departments page, and you go down in there and we have the content that's pretty much still the same, that I've cleaned up and I've gotten some updates of all the departments. The interesting part about that one is, 30 days when we first started, which was December 6th through January 6th, we had 390 people, 391 people visit. In the last 30 days, we had 739. You can't close that all the way. This is an open public meeting. We have to keep okay. it. Open. Okay, well, it's. <laughs> we'll tolerate it. Okay. So, so that one is one? open. So anyway, so you have more people coming to your website than you did your normal county department stuff now. I don't know why that's happening. We're getting a lot of traffic from people just typing in Stafford County Auto Park. In fact, they know the website. They just type in and they're going to it. That's, I think that's probably different you guys like to see on the website. Yeah, they're going to it. 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 Yeah, they are going to it yeah they are going to it I don't have the statistics because I didn't, I, I messed up on how to track them, but basically this is one of your most popular pages. And what this is, Carol, is uh, Nita's phenomenal meeting minutes. That's phenomenal. all that's on there. They're, they've never been called that before. So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and all we, so what we do is she gets them out to me very timely by noon or something of today. Then I post them that day or the next day, and we so we have every meeting minute out there since January 1. And we've tracked how many people are going to those old meeting minutes, and a lot of people are going back and reading them, so it's pretty good. So anybody that says they don't have know what you guys are doing, just tell them, send them to the website, because it's all posted, and we're not deleting the thing. So, uh, And they're obviously interested. The other one, local businesses, and this is Carolyn's idea way back when, when I first met her. Uh, with local businesses, and this is, we've added all the businesses that were in that, uh, what, what's the name, the brochure, uh, we started off with almost nobody visiting it, like the first 30 days we had 48 people, the last 30 days we had 170 people go to the local businesses, so that's good, people are going to see where to eat, whatever, I have people emailing me, would you change my address, would you do this, all the time, so we have people out there looking at that. This next one, I changed the name on. It used to say Povera, and I changed it because the name is everything. It's like, what do you put out there to make people go inquire? So I changed Quiveras to Natural Treasures. Uh, and now we've had like 12 in that first 30 days, and the last 30 days we have 74 people. So we need to work on the Quivera page. We don't have hardly any good content out there. Um, I have some ideas on what we could do but we need to provide content. The, the hard part is there's a lot of information about Quiver on the web, on the internet already, so what do we provide that's unique? So that would be something. Um, unique and special to Stafford County. Yeah. I mean, I had an idea. One idea I had, video is powerful, and uh, you could do something like uh, the changing seasons of Quiver. So you could start now, and as the seasons change, it would be fun to post vid new videos, and we keep them we keep them out there on YouTube so they could always go look, but it would that would be something unique. And, and then you can always do a little promo on Stafford. You can write anything you want on that. So we need to come up with some good text, some good images. 
some, some good ideas to put out there because they obviously are going to it. The other area, natural treasures is obviously, people are, oh, what's natural treasures? Like, what is a natural treasure in Stafford County? That's what they're thinking. And so the one I, you know, dear to my heart besides Pavira is the wind. And it's a natural treasure. <laughs> Wait. Yes, we did that, right? But <laughs> <laughs> you're here yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I was. You're on your Saturday. I was here Saturday and over yesterday. And, and you're not the only one with the natural treasure. In Barton County, they have some wind up there too. But um, <laughs> the uh, it would be fun to do something here, and we could maybe do some great pictures. And we get so I don't know, get some creative pictures of the wind blowing over this, and then we could maybe do some creative content on just statistics about the wind. But I think that would be kind of cool. Back here on news, the news page is up for whatever you guys want. The only thing I put out there so far are the meeting minutes. But if you guys have stuff going on that you're doing that you want to publicize, and you got to remember, this is publicized to the world, so maybe there's stuff you don't want publicized. But like, for instance, the stuff on the energy and the wind stuff that you're doing, you could put that out there. Um, there's nothing stopping you. So all you have to do is send me some content, and I can break this up into uh, meeting minutes, and then I can say some projects we're working. So that's just an option for you. Um, the next one I changed that now name to. It used to be upcoming events. I've made it What's Happening. I thought that was a cooler name. And we had 20 visits the first 30 days, and last month we had 102. I have people contacting me. Uh, through another part of the website, uh, add, asking to add their events to that page. So that's good news. Yeah. That's great news. Uh, hidden treasures. We've always had hidden treasures. It's always been a pretty popular one. It's the same old thing. They want to know what's a hidden treasure. So now we have the Mr. Hood out there. We have Carolyn's recipe. <laughs> and we have a great write-up from on the Stafford County Museum who helped me. What's Terry Bradley. Yeah, he yeah. gave permission for us to put that out there. And Michael Pathway was going to write something, but he said there's a great article. So let's just use that. So we got a lot of traffic to that. We can always add more to that one. This next one is Carolyn's idea completely. <laughs> <laughs> and we went back and forth what to name it. And my idea is, she had a much better idea. It's tell me more. And basically what this is, is just the whole uh, concept of connecting people that used to live, or currently live in Stafford County. And so... Um, we have a lot that we haven't done that we've talked about doing, but we did get one thing done. And what this is, Carolyn wrote the content. I found, I found a little clip art, and I, I put it on the web. What this is, is a page out there that you go to, and uh, you can fill out a form that's not completely printed. But they fill out information, and then Carolyn gets that information. And then she's building a list of alumni of Stafford County, and she can talk about her plans for what she's doing with that. But the good news is we got two people filling out last week. I felt good about because a couple of other, like the uh, uh, Education Foundation, has put something similar out and hadn't yet got some sign-ups. They haven't got any. Oh, we got two. So I was so excited. So we're going to try to, you know, merge them so that we're all collecting. Yeah. You know, collect more to, baskets, collect more people. But it's hard to get people to fill those out. And this form on here is actually pretty long, uh, but anyway, I was very excited that we got those people, and uh, so that's good news. The uh, next one, FAQ. What you had, you guys have in this website is you got. I mean, you go into the departments, and man, you got content out there at the kazoo. I don't know how much of it's current, uh, but we've been converting it. But one of the things I thought was important was some FAQ questions, which are frequently asked questions, and I pulled some of that content up front. So. People can go, and as you, we had zero, it was because it was new, and last 30 days we had 71 people hit that content, so they're interested. This next one is a links one, it's always been there, and we have had a lot of people visit that one. This right here is kind of discussion. We had, Nina was approached by Glenn, um, he wanted to be on the website, he wants the extension people on the website. Um, so I went out and researched it. What I did was did add was their the logo and a link to their website. But they have a website that K-State spent a lot of money on. Their website is basically the K-State website, and they provide it for all the extensions. So they have a really good website. Um, so I, my position right now is we can link to their website. 
we can add events uh, like up, you know, for their forage foods coming up. We should add that under what's up happening. Mm -hmm. But they have a really good website. Um, and I talked to the lady over there. I'm so bad with names. We went back and forth on emails last week because they didn't think it was working. But she, I'm going to meet with her because she doesn't know how to update the links. So I don't think they know how to use their website. Uh, so I'm going to sit down with them a little bit and maybe give them some ideas on how they can promote themselves. But there's all kinds of stuff they could be doing on their own website. And I just, I mean, we got a lot on ours, and I don't see any point in having redundant data. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my position. So you're just going to link to theirs and not try and create another one? I don't think we should. Uh, we could put information under, under the departments, but I mean, it's a good website. It's, it's better than what we have here, for sure, because they stay hired a big graphic time. Just, I'm sure they spent lots of money on it. But, but the, like the fair and other events, 4-H events? We could put that. All they, do is fill, all they have to do is send me the info, and I'll be glad to add it to what's happening. Just put it in that part of it. Yeah. Right, absolutely. I don't, makes sense. I don't see, unless they can explain to me why they think they need some space on us. we got plenty to tackle here. Uh, the last one is a new, it's also another form, I didn't give it to you, it's like Carolyn's but it's much shorter. And it's basically, it's, I, got a con I got somebody to fill it out, I can tell you, Jeanette Hildebrand filled it out, sent me an email and asked me to put this mm -hmm. event on the, on the upcoming page. So people are going to that and sending, uh, sending us info. And everything goes to me now, I can send it to Carolyn, because all the email, it basically it comes to me as an email with all the, whatever they filled out. And then uh, I send the tell me more over to Carolyn, but I can send it directly to anybody that wants to be. I don't need to be in that loop. So that's where we set today. Uh, I think we need to work on natural treasures, uh, the proverbs. Uh, I I I've, I want to put some of the wind stuff on there and just kind of tell people. Well, th this for instance. Uh, just put out there that we, as a county, are interested in wind energy. And don't tell them anything more than that. Um, we could have a form like this, contact us on that page and say, you know, they mm -hmm. could fill out information. But who knows what goes to that website? We, I mean, I know right now that Homeland Security went there five times in the last 30 days. I know the FBI is going there. I mean, I know there's people out there hitting our websites and just watching what we're doing. Me. <laughs> watching what we're doing. We got, I mean, one of the, we got people from Martin County checking our website out, and I'm kind of because one of the people was from Great Bend that yeah, filled out your form. Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured we got people up in Martin County uh, going, "What are those guys doing, Stafford County down there?" Yeah. Well, the FBI I think started to tell you got them all. I know, probably not. <laughs> so, so, I, so it's, it's kind of like a marketing, you have a marketing tool, and the fact that you guys are the official website for Stafford County, you have a voice on the web that you can use if you want to. Uh, let me ask you a question. We, I think we were talking about hidden treasures. This is something we got to figure out. We were talking about putting businesses on there, restaurant, whatever. You know, it's a bit. It's, that's a bit of a controversy because you don't want to pick one above another one. Say it's a restaurant or some other business. I, I have, you know, we need to kind of have oh, a I, consensus there. Well, I'm going that. through what my perception of what is in the visitor's guide is a start, but it's not complete. Right. So I've been building this database, and I'm calling. I mean, it's partly just to also just kind of, I don't know, help in the establishment of the Economic Development Office, but I call people and I let them know that we're establishing this and kind of ask for their consent to put it on the website. Well, nobody's telling you no, we're not charging them for it or anything like that. It's right. publicity for them, but it also kind of lets them know what we're doing and um, kind yeah. of what's, what, I mean, but we end up having a little conversation. Right? So, yeah. what's that? You're putting that under local businesses? Right, That's right. Fun. And the idea is that I think when we evolve this, that it'll be a searchable database. It, right now it's more of a listing, and so you would need to know that uh, to go under E or yeah. M if you were in Maxville to look for a restaurant, because those are the names of the restaurants that, yeah, you know, you, you need to know. But if we evolve this to a searchable database, then you can tag those as restaurants, right. and then you can search restaurants, and it will give you the evolve. eight different restaurants in Stafford County you can choose from or whatever. Yeah. 
But um, yeah, this is it's, the it's taking some time because I am calling each one of them and kind of we end up having a short conversation about what economic development is going to be doing and I ask for their email address too so that we have a way of communicating with them not for their web purposes really but just in the future if we have you know something that I think would be of interest to or you know that we think it would be of interest to the the business community we can give them an email notification so I'm um, so she's building in progress. a great list. And then we're going to, I mean, we're, we're kind of jumping a little bit ahead, but we talked about, you know, uh, the, the next level of our website and having that all on there. And it's a pretty big jump to the next level, what we're talking about. But but local businesses are pretty popular now. And they just started off, I was disappointed. We only had one or two people. And now we got all kinds of people searching. And I can, I can tell you, uh, Mom's Cafe is searched on and found. People go out on Google and they're typing in Mom's Cafe, they're founding her, they're typing in Stafford County Cafe, they're typing in all kinds of businesses and they're finding them just because we have that text out there. Mm -hmm. And when people call me, I said, I, give me some more, tell me what you do, don't just say the name of your company. And so we're just gradually, slowly improving some visibility yeah. for them. And I'm hoping driving some business to them. But that's for them to tell. So that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> So I think, I think bottom line is we're doing great. We just need to continue doing what we're doing. As the interesting part, one statistic that's interesting to us, because we're interested in finding people all over the United States, um, maybe to potentially move here. Uh, our numbers, I didn't print this off for anybody else, but basically our numbers have improved from 300 to 421 in the state of Kansas. So that's a, that's a real nice increase. Our numbers from excuse me, Virginia, which we want to decrease, did decrease uh, by close to 100. So that's good, because that was the wrong people. Missouri, maybe it's because I'm over there, went up quite a bit, more than double. Because <laughs> 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 you know, I was telling everybody about it. Uh, Texas is going up. This is from Missouri? Huh? People from Missouri? Well, that's the interesting part of the statistic. I don't know how this works, because I'm from Missouri, but my laptop's here. Does it count me as... I don't, so that's why these numbers are a little flaky, but so you kind of take them with a grain of salt. But the fact we have increasing numbers from Kansas, the fact we have increasing numbers from Missouri, uh, Texas, those are all good things. And my theory, and I will prove to be true, is coming up, is these numbers are going to go up as people start wanting to travel and they're checking out places to see. And I think Quivira is obviously a hot spot. Mm -hmm. And my guess is they're going to, our numbers are going to go up pretty high this summer. So that's why I'm pretty anxious to get some information out there on Provera, because um, I think we'll see some increasing numbers. That's all I have for you guys. I think we're doing good. That's good. On the, uh, I don't know where this would fall, whether it be under hidden treasures, but um, last week we did this whistle stop with the scenic byway, and one of the places was Hudson. Well, Hudson ha Flower Mills has a video. It's quite long. And I'm wondering if we could get a clip of Hudson Flower Mills showing the old picture of the mill, and I don't know what else. But anyway, to, uh, you can leave it. Just open it. It's getting hot. Uh, and see if they would give us a, a shorter version of that of that video. And yeah. Put it on Do they have some video person creating that for them? Is Brent Ronan. Brent Ronan, local boy that lives down in, in uh, Nashville. Nashville. And, and he can give it to me in the right format yes. and all kinds of things. Well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Should, that would be good. Should we do, would that be a hidden treasure or would that be a local business? I mean... Their have their customers are all East Coast customers. So should that's kind of what I was asking too. You know, what, under hidden treasures, for is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. I consider the flower mill a treasure in the county, and, but it is a business. We're kind of crossing the line here. We're not here to promote specific businesses or one above the other. I was using restaurants as an example because you know, take say you take the Hudson cafe and put it under a hidden treasure, which you know to me it is, and in the flower mill, but it's also a business. And is it fair to promote them 
above the other restaurants in the county. Uh, that's we got a fine line. The flour mill has a lot of history behind it. Of the, the flour mill does this especially, yes. And there's not a competing flour mill that you're going to offend. So I think that's easier. But it's still something that's exactly that we that we need to you know be careful of and, and really have a clear idea of how we want to go proceed from this point. So we could do the hidden enough. treasures deal. I think is a real like jewel. Like the golf I think course and the jail and some of those things we've talked about sitting on there. Mexico. You know, what's that advantage? The bench that, that's a treasure, right? That's yeah. things are. Yeah. And and the cemetery. The Martin the, Cemetery. Yeah. yeah. But those should be under there. Maybe we should have the the local businesses. Right, the way it works now is a, basically a local business listing. Right. Uh, we could have something else that says uh, featured business of the month and you could start featuring businesses and then everybody could have their turn. They would have to cooperate and provide us content and all kinds of stuff, but we could go that route. That's Are you saying that? I mean, I don't know how, I, well, I don't think it's, uh, the content has changed um, for quite some time, but the flour mill does have its own website. I suppose you could link to it and let people gather information from that website as opposed to, I don't know, featuring them as putting, putting it on our yeah. website and having to collect the, the data well, to put it on there. Although I know that sends them to their website. What you want to do is have them you want doing the activity on ours. But I we've, know. we've already talked that over with the extension office with them to their website. Um, I'm not necessarily in favor of sending people to other websites. I like to keep them on my own website, but K State website so it's very expensive. Well, it's just like them. linking to the Wetlands and Wildlife website. I mean, but we really don't have any traffic to that hardly. Yeah. Nobody seems to be interested in the wetlands. Uh, you know, I got all kinds of places I put on there to get people to link, and nobody links one one. They they're more interested really? in Quivira. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be well. Hard okay. To all right, well, thing. an example is then the Quivira's website. That's a high dollar website. Yeah. But now we can link from there from them to ours, can't we? Oh well, yeah, we can have them do it. Yeah. But that's okay. good mm -hmm. when people choose to come to our website from but, somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, and the, and they and a little bit of editorial comment on what some of the people are doing is they're hiding our link. So yeah, they link to us, but nobody can find it. <laughs> that's not that's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Google 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 Google. Google. Well, there's some. Yeah, there's some, the wetlands. Our link is pretty hidden. I don't know if you can get any lower visibility on their web on their website, but uh, and uh, we don't hardly have any referrals come into us. Our traffic either from somebody typing in your name or the search engines. Anybody that's linking to us, uh, not not well, making. Can't us you fix that? I tried. I, St. John News wasn't linking. At, they added a link quickly for me. They didn't have a link, uh, so. But we're not. We're getting not getting a lot of traffic from them linking. But, but that's kind of a sideline of when do we add stuff to the natural tra the hidden treasures, the natural treasures. That's a good question. Yeah, our, and our and, and what, what are going to be the parameters? Yeah, it's a good question. I think we ought to add a featured business listing. Is what I think, and put people under that. And we are talking about it putting something else here that would be basically, we may not call it economic development, but it would be economic development, which would take us to this landing page. Right, we go. Which, which I didn't even go through. Okay. You could talk about Well, that. I don't know if it's pertinent, no, it's but pertinent. just make sure that it's pertinent. Um, it's pertinent because uh, what we've done, and I didn't test this out, is she has a domain name. Remind her of it. It's terrible if you have to say it. It sounded good on paper, but... <laughs> ESFCO.net, <laughs> which is nice and short, but if you say it, you have to say E like Edward, S like Sam, <laughs> F like Frank. You can't so anyway, articulate it. That's that's a domain. This, this is a little techy, but we have a domain name, StaffordCounty.org, which we own now, and it goes directly to this page. If somebody types that in, it's the first page. On the other website, it it, it refers, it, if you type that website in, it goes directly to our alumni page. So that's kind what of other website? Her domain name goes domain directly name. to our alumni. So they type in her name, they skip around this, and that's completely legit. It's the way a lot of people are doing it. It's almost like she has a microsite, they call it the techie word, microsite within, within a major website, which is fine. 
Uh, so we, we are, it could look like it is its own website, right. like economic development. This is our the economic development mm -hmm. presence, but it's actually a part of the Stafford County website. So it's helping the traffic of the Stafford County website and everything. Even if we want to, not necessarily if we were to, you know, refer someone to information on the website and didn't necessarily want to route them through right. county business. We wanted to give them, you know, a link, you know, the, the, the direct location. For economic development information, we could be, and she can that way she can have her own look and feel if she so desires and kind of then control that little. But it's, it's an entity within a big website. It helps her out. It helps you guys out. Everybody benefits from that kind of a setup. So that's what we're kind of looking at. Okay. But, so on hidden treasures, some of the things that come to my mind, you know, and I, someone compose this story and then send it to you and you add it but it's things that uh, like the mystery river like the the hunt clubs at Quivira now this is you know way back when uh, the Martin Cemetery which is an African-American Civil War cemetery out here on the 50. Um, I mentioned the Hudson uh, video um, Bill the Rooster uh, Pelican Pete you know, uh, so the band shell. The band shell. Uh, well, the band shell. I mean, I could, I I envision that as a picture and then a and then a paragraph. The stones came from what, all forty-eight states or fifty or sixty, whatever. <coughs> I I, forget, I don't know. I'm asking. Isn't that the significance yes. of that band yes. shell? Okay. Um, the hill over here. The, you know, why St. John doesn't have a tornado? I mean, we're talking about wind. <laughs> the Mormon church. No, the Mormon church. Mormon church. Um, so, so, it sounds like you guys have a lot. You know, the, uh, the Indian barrel ground up in in Putman Township, that's on the, in, on the historical registry, but no one can find it because it's been hidden. Um, you know, we've got stuff about the Stafford Gun Club and the Hutchison Gun Club and all of this prior to Quivira becoming a national refuge, and there's pictures of those. So I mean, so what do we do? Do we have somebody? Well, you guys have a lot of writers. You seem like you guys have some good writers in this county. And then just send them to you. Yeah, you, all you, all I've been doing so far is taking the copy that people send me. Okay. I really, I'm not a writer. Uh, and then, and then I'll add it. Um, it sounds like you got a whole lot of good stuff, though. And we should do something about the oil. Yeah, first you know. oil well drilled in Stafford County. Yeah, something like that. and you know, a lot of people will come through. You got the artesian well. Too. Got the artesian yeah. well. Uh, we got the eagles. We got you know we got a lot of wildlife. Got the buzzards on the water tower. You know, on the water, there. yeah. Uh, because I recall a couple of, a couple of years ago, a guy from Wisconsin came through and saw these pump jacks, and he said, "What are these doing here? Kansas doesn't have oil. <laughs> Texas has it. In Oklahoma, you know." So he was, you know, so it's. The informative stuff that we take for granted needs to be piped out to those people in, on the East Coast. I agree. I think it, there's something to be said for some consistency in the style of this, the the writing. You know, I yeah. could probably right. farm it out to a lot of people that could write it. But you know, the idea of having some consistency and kind of a, a would be nice. And there's probably a way to write that in a way that's kind of upbeat and fun, as opposed to a History a history lesson? Yeah, it sounds like a perfect job for an economic development group. The, uh, <laughs> and the I think you, you named so many things that I didn't have a slightest clue of. I think we got to write our list of hidden treasures we see in this county, and I, then I think we got to start prioritizing them and seeing which ones would be the hit, biggest hit, and then we just start start down that list. But you guys, you got a lot. Well, like the band shell. I mean, you're just talking about a paragraph. Well, that's to explain, which is great because on the website that's what you want. That's right. Picture and what's it say, right? So and what? The cemetery. The yeah. Cemetery, you know, just yeah. I mean, just. Um, 
be nice if somebody actually knew what they were talking about. That it was right. like the the uh, so who, you the find WPA the right school that was built up here. Well, it was like St. John's St. John School. High School. Uh, the, 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 the school or the building that's up on Fourth Street, east of uh, the Stafford Road, is a WPA-built country school. This before you get to the entrance to go to Provera, there's people live in it, but that was a WPA, you know, and WPA meant what? Works Progress Authority. Authority for administration. Works Progress is what it was. So. Administration, I think it was. But I mean, it's significant study. history. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, then I, I still go back. I think we have to start collecting a list of what people think would be hidden treasure. Did you write them down? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would never be the baby. Nina's that was a good note taker. She's got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she wrote anything down. I was watching both of them. But, uh, they then, were listening. Well, then, then, right there. then what I'd like is um, you guys. I know he doesn't go on the internet, but maybe you guys do. <laughs> see? Um, he knows you too. Um, a lot of the higher end websites you're going to see when you take your mouse and you put over that that link, it's going to do what I call a drop down or a list mm -hmm. of things under that. That's, mm -hmm. I have not done that. I can easily do that. But when we get to that many things, we would just have a mouse over and then they could cruise, list all those out. And then we can add to that list as we choose. Okay. But it sounds like we're at that point where we should start doing something like that. So. I think a list is our first step, and then we just start getting people to write. And we could even ask for people to turn in if they think they know about hidden treasure in Stafford County. Hey, submit it to us. We could do stuff like that too. So, sound good? That's all I yeah, have. Yeah, sounds good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're doing well. I'm really pleased. <laughs> arguing over whether they have, who has the, the, the legal authority to make the rules. And the Rules Committee wants the, the, the authority to make the rules. And some people say that the um, Board of Pharmacy already has been given the statutory authority to do so. I think it's just it's kind of, they're playing power games of who's, okay. who's, they're not arguing the merits of telepharmacy itself. Will they be able to resolve that? I hope hmm. so. I hope. I think. Well, my conversation with Ruth, Ruth Teichman is that she wanted to do some investigations to who on the House side was going to be in charge of the Rules Committee next year because apparently it's, it's a situation I was I'm not familiar with how in the in the state legislature how that the Rules Committees apparently. Um, shift from one um, to the other, from the House to the Senate every other year. So the woman who has a lot of authority may not next year if it goes to the House. I, I let money Ruth check into that. But um, right now they, they fear retribution in terms of their appropriations if they um, go too much against Vicki Schmidt. But, um, well. 
So, I mean, I, my converse, I think I related this last week, my conversation with the, uh, the executive director of the, with the board of pharmacy, she, I think, very much, they don't see it as complaining to get a letter. They very much welcome the idea of this to kind of show that it's not something that just, um, I don't know, a couple of pharmacists are interested in, but it's something that, that um, especially rural areas feel like could benefit them and have an example of that would be to them. So are they trying to get more people from Western Kansas to, let, to write letters of support, or? I don't know that they're actively soliciting just, it, but they're, they're we just happy to have it, ourselves. is how I read it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that they're trying to get more people involved, but I don't think it's something where there's not a lot of people on the board of form. There's one from Cimarron, who I think is championing this, but if you look at the rest of the board of pharmacy, it's Manhattan, Lawrence, Topeka, Wichita. Overland Park, something one of the key cities. Yeah. It's just there's not a lot of people that see this as maybe something to prioritize. But if there's some um, some political noise made about it, I think they'll respond. I think they were inclined to do it anyway. But say for the the objection to Senator Smith. Oh, Have you heard any more about from the Midwest Energy? We got a meeting set up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't hear stuff. I'll be here next Monday at 10. And it will be. Is that part of the commission meeting or? Yeah. Okay. It, it will be uh, who do you know? And what subject is? There are more questions from you guys. simply that we have a common interest, a common goal here, that he's a small regional co-op, and that his, his goals and interest and his constituents are basically the same as ours. And the idea of keeping this money and this infrastructure as local as much as possible and getting some benefit from it locally is way better than what's going on right now, he agreed. And he basically said, I, I don't know what or how, but I, I think there's got to be some room for some wind development in Stafford County. And, and we're willing to explore it with you. And what he really wants is a partnership more than being on the other side of the table and having people come in and tell us this and then we have to go to them and they go, no, that isn't right. But he wants to be on this side of the table with us when the developers or whoever come through and say, this is what we're going to do. We'll be informed, we'll be working with them for a common goal. Mm -hmm. And he just very much supports that idea. So we go to the meeting. I think that we're going to find them cooperative, but maybe not like what they have to tell us. So 
that's that's in a nutshell what 30 minutes of conversation was. Well, at least it's a start. I hope I'm so. In. I, I hope so. I just I think it's a start in the right spot. Instead of, instead of coming starting out here and then going to them and then they go, no, you can't do that. Everything I've checked on before back over the years has always been a dead end. You always get the yeah. place on the transmission line. They say no. We're just so we're going to start there. on the other end and we're going to work from them, from the utility, from the user of the power out to the producer. It's kind of the, kind of his thoughts and mine too, I guess. We're going to, we're going to sit here and we're going to see what we can do, what's feasible with what we have. And he's talking about, you know, not just the big centralized mills, but Distributed, distributed energy. energy. Right. It's something Midwest energy is very interested in. And, and and I'm interested in it more as it's just getting a foothold. It's something the kid thing started. Because that's really all that happened in Spearville, was they had just a little bit of a window that allowed them to build a few towers, and now it's just it's like a gold rush. It's just phenomenal. Are they interested in jointly owning them, you know? The mills? I don't know. That's a very good question. And they're going to initially say no, but then they turn right around and do it. It's kind of like the transmission lines. We don't build, we don't, we're not interested in building a transmission line, and then we find out, oh, well, yeah, the one from Ellsworth to Hutchison, yes, we're very much involved in that. It's our project, or we're a big part of that project. So initially they always say, no, this can't be done, and then, then you turn around and like they're doing it next door and that's my frustration and I expressed that to him and so hopefully we'll be able to work with them instead of being next door because they're very much involved with, in the transmission line that's going from Ellsworth to Hutch you know with Joseph mm -hmm. yeah he knew all about it he know, knows all about the other lines even the even the Golden Belt Great Belt Express line he's very familiar with it And uh, he did. He did make the point. And I think I told you guys this last week. That, that letter that they wanted us to send basically was giving them the, the power of eminent domain through the county. So I'm kind of glad we didn't send the letter because I'm not prepared to give them the power of eminent domain yet, if ever. And he said, and that is the one bargaining chip that you do have with them. Mm -hmm. And once you give up that chip, you don't have it. So they, basically that's what the letter, by, by them becoming a, what is it, wanting to be a utility or recognizes a utility? Public utility. Yeah, once they become a public utility, they achieve eminent domain. Absolutely. So them asking for a letter from us saying to support them becoming a public utility was essentially them saying, give us your domain through your county. And Wes was the one that requested that. Oh, no, no, no this is the Golden Belt Express. The Grain Belt. Uh, the Grain Belt. Uh, whichever. Is that the same as Clean Line? Clean yes. Line, that's yes. it. They, yeah. Grain, Grain belt. belt Express. Grain Belt Express. Okay. Which is Clean Line. Clean Line has actually got several projects going on. This is the name of the one going through our okay. area. He, he, I mean, he told me that. He said it's not just that one transmission line they're working on. They're working on several. Okay, that makes sense. So, just so people in Missouri can have power, by the way. We need a lot of power over there. But Midwest is involved <laughs> in the V-Line. <laughs> I think they are. From, next, from uh, Madison Lodge up to here is, it's their responsibility. The other outfit is doing it from, Mac, from uh, Madison. Madison to Wichita. Well, and then the line that's going, that's currently being built from Spearbelt through Hayes to Nebraska, which is not the V-line, I don't know which one that's called. But here you've got 80 windmills out there, or 100, and now you've got three major transmission lines going to them, all of a sudden. And then yeah. someone else is involved with the line from Medicine Lodge into Oklahoma. Yeah. Is that X line? The, the is X the V line one going up to Hayes? Do you know? To Spearville. From Spearville to Hayes to Nebraska somewhere. I don't know, but it's well underway. I, I was got that area and I was like, well, look at this. 
big old Christmas trees, big single poles, huge, zigzagging. <laughs> well, there's another one that's already completed from Wichita up through Hutch to the northeast corner of Hutch, Reno County, and all the way out. Why are things going to Hutch? You know, hmm? I guess that's a question we can ask him. Why are they going to Hutch? What's there? There's a lot of things I'd like to know. Hopefully, though. What if we can get a map of transmission lines? Is there anything like that? Yeah. Can you really? Yeah. It's available online. It is now. which car was affordable and um, I went um, on Friday and they gave presentations in her class and they really did a good job so I really felt the kids learned to get out of it and it was good for the community to be involved it was really nice and then I have um, an aging quarterly report for you with EMS I just thought I'm going to try to start giving these to you guys quarterly. And I broke it down in 90 days, like 1 to 90, 91 to 80. And then, of course, the last page is going to show you the, the total. So how are we doing overall? Oh, I see progress in some areas, and then in some areas, um, I don't... It's just a lot of those old things lagging that we're not getting. Having. Well, I guess you might not get deceased. I don't know what that one is. Yeah, he is. Oh, yes. And see, that's what a lot of these are. Is, yes, that's it. I've just seen that. I know. Yeah. yeah. And I, I write notes to Misty, you know, when I know who's deceased and not. And see, that's good for you guys to bring that. Because, see, I didn't know that on you. So I will. And a lot of it, Misty doesn't know either. Well, the brother in here, too. Yeah. Yeah, now that one I, I've told them about. Well, just because they're deceased doesn't mean they can't be collected, does it? <laughs> if the estate's already closed, yeah, because technically, you know, an right, attorney right, publishes in the paper if there's if any bills. If you don't come up with your, if you file your lien, you know, just say you're out there, yeah. so then you're done, right? You're yeah. done. Pretty much you are. Um, well, all you're dealing with is the aging industry, right? Yeah. How are we doing on the current stuff? Do you have any idea? Well, really the, the first column, one to 90 days, and go to the last page. That okay. kind of shows you current and over 90 days. So. The, the one to 90, you really can't judge on yet because a lot of those are still outstanding. 
sure. insurance claims. So you really need to move on up to like the 90 to 180 day range. Before it's actually not being paid. I think so because, and sometimes even some things take eight months to get a response on. So you kind of got to be, but um. Well, are we rebilling? Yeah, Is that we, going on? we've done um, a billing in March, Thank and you. one in February, and I do get response that when you send them a bill. I've noticed that's when the people have been paying their payments, you know, people that are on a payment plan. And because, like, we did one in November, we kind of skipped, skipped December and January because we were just busy. And I noticed I had payments from people in November when we sent them a bill, and then I had payment in March and February when we sent them a bill. So I can tell it really does do it does. good. To send them a bill every month. Yeah. So I think we're all that. Yeah. If I don't get a bill, I don't know. Yeah, right? and you forget. And, you do. So, and we're, you know, there's some bills, some people can only pay 50 bucks, but that's okay. As long but as they That's why it's important to send one every yeah. month. It's worth it to do it. So. Now, on these ones that are greater than 360 days, is that 360 70? to two years, three years, four years? Mm -hmm. You know, I think. We just so well after one year draw the line and write it off. You know, if you're looking at greater than a year, so all right, so 360 days. How many more has 360 or on on this? Well, can't can we send it to collection? Can't we try and get something out of it? Yeah. Well, and that's what you need to decide with Steve. We need to sit down and visit. I mean, I understand why it's, it's yeah. silly for us to keep just sending a bill. And I think after a year... I'm going to try to some way bill monthly. Have some program set up where you just kick out the bills monthly to them. They were going to talk to the hospital about, about how they Yeah, they should give it to the yeah, hospital yeah, about they can put on their bill. Well, he was actually trying to get and try and get the hospital to do it, which isn't what oh. we were suggesting at all. Yeah. We just wanted to know if there was a better procedure. Yeah. And the hospital of course deals with this all the time, so we thought maybe they could help. But I don't know if that happened either. Do you heard it? But and I never but we could tell And right maybe we all just Steve and Miss But, but they are getting billed we'll every month, you're saying, so that's that's progress. But I do agree. We need to implement a plan for like um, over so many days. Um, do do you want to hire a firm for collections? I mean, yeah, I think we just turn it over to collection, get what we can. I don't have, I mean, I have an attorney that I could even talk to. I know she does a lot of personal property work for counties, and I, I'll bet she would be. But you're going to pay probably 40, 30, 40 percent. It, it varies. But to keep it current. Most probably 6 percent, too. Yeah. Some as much as 50, really. Depends on but how old they are, how, how, much, how aging they are. So right. Right. But I mean, that's really, you need to get Steve in on that conversation. Which I agree. Yeah, that should be his decision. Because he may have a different idea or know of resources. And, I don't know. But I'm just going to try to bring you these reports quarterly. Okay, so that's, great. Can, oh, that's great. Yeah. But you agree that, like, after a year, Yes. Or something I, like that. I think you need to be ready. In fact, I think it, I think we should have Joe write up some sort of a collection letter, even so, so you can have a letter to send to these people. Um, you know, just a uniform letter you send to everybody that right. Joe can make up for us, and when we need to send it, we just put it in with the billing, and then you know, give them a warning. You know, this is in the process or getting ready to be turned over to collection agency. A lot of times when you send a letter from a county attorney, you get pretty good results. Mm -hmm. I think that's good advice. It's like on my warrants. I send out those notices and they, they get ignored. But boy, once that notice comes that's from the right. sheriff's department, it makes a big difference. Then my phone rings off the wall. Oh, I got a warrant. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Don't come get me. Don't come arrest me. So it does make a difference. Uh, people pay attention a little bit more. Well, I think that's a lot of we're just they're used to ignoring it. And yeah. We need to get there too. But I do see improvement on some of the people making the monthly payments, and that will really help 
um, because there's some that are many years old and they're starting to pick up making payments again where they hadn't made payments in the past. So it is helping. So some areas we're doing better and some, like you say, Clayton, we need to figure out what we want to clean up and what kind of collection process we want to use and get started with the program. But like you said, that's kind of between us and yeah. Steve. Yeah. It's, his, it's his deal. Mm -hmm. okay. We got to put that in the yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. deal with it. We we'll forget about it all the time. He's bringing it up to Steve. Less than 360 days, you have 75,000, dollars still on the books. Then you look at crater, and then 360, and then that jumps to 167,000. So, and that's why I'm asking: Is are some of these bills been on the books for four years? Five yeah, and years, you know, a lot then? of those are on with the set-off program with the stamp camp. And you know what? We still do get a little bit of money that dribbles in. We have one account we had written off, and by golly, the next month we got payment from the set-off people on it. So we had to. Well, didn't they say Barton County never takes them off? They just leave them on the set off. And yeah. They get it all. And then that's why your accounts receivable gets to look. Yeah, so that's bad. why it looks. Because you pull them. So you got a hundred thousand dollars greater than. Uh, and about seventy thousand dollars is what we have turned over to set off. So. Okay. Okay. We won't bite you. Well, I just didn't know. So yeah, you guys keep that in mind too when you're looking at that greater than three hundred sixty. Okay, thanks very much. What? Uh, all right. I'll give it to you to look at that. $5.24 a square foot, which include the cost to remove the existing carpet and acquire floor prep for the new carpet. And it's. Um, I said 432. Yeah, that was the second. Second. Yeah, second. That's cheaper than the other. Yeah. Well, but that's not with the tear out, right? 432? Yeah, well, for approximately 492 cents a square foot. So, is he suggesting that some of we. <coughs> no, he's just. That you guys carry out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's $2,000 to clear it. We could do it. I, I'm not saying you couldn't. He just broke it down. That, of that 15, is 2,000 of it is, is removing out of the carpet. And. Uh, I think that if we don't, it's going to look pretty bad. I mean, although 
they can clean it. So we have to make a decision if we want to replace the carpet or not. You don't think we can clean it and make it look decent? The way the rest of that place looks, I would say no. We're still packed. Well, am I not reading it right? It's uh, probably not. No, there's no sales. I'm being so sorry. Well, but the other thing is, um, there's a couple of places that, that will be patched there in front of the stage. I mean, they can patch it, but there's going to definitely be a difference in color. From I assume this is the time to do it, is what you're saying. This is the time to do it. And uh, if we go with the, um, the carpet that's there now, then he's going to have to change the colors of the wall. And what they've done so far is, is the stage is going to be a different color carpet than what the floor is. Instead of it all being, you know, the same Well, color. we do have some little room, but they come in, come in under the process. Yeah. Plus, plus. So we got all the yeah. way. Yeah, we'll come under that, so we got that. Yeah, the appliance is $10,000, I think, under five. Yeah. This is a 15 right? I know. But you're looking at... Uh, now, is there going to be an issue with the tile and asbestos? If no, there's... John said he's 99.5% <laughs> sure there's no tile, asbestos tile, under the carpet. He said there was where the sound stage was mm -hmm. and where the stage, the existing stage. But he said there is no tile under that carpet. It's glued down. Two asbestos. Do as <laughs> to bear concrete. So, but that includes, you know, filling in the cracks because there is more than likely cracks. And you want to do this, don't you? Clayton. I'm just saying that if we're gonna do it, if we're gonna do it, do it now, we need do to do it. it right. If we don't do it, I know that the naysayers will say, "Well, you've got all this nice stuff. Why don't you have a nice floor?" And I'm, it's I'm just frustrated that this, you know, that we were told well, that it's going to be fine. And well, so. I mean, and it I, is I, fine. But it looks... It's going to look dull compared to the rest of you. Dull. might not be the right dull. word. It's going to look shabby. Shabby. That's a better word. I, I am impressed with the building. It's really mm -hmm. nice. Okay. i got to admit. And I realize it is fifteen thousand dollars. It's either it's either now or later. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if it's five back off, so make it look like South Park's bad that way. Either, so. And since they're there, you know. And the other thing is that if we decide later on to redo the community floor, um, there might be a, a problem in the color. So it's best if we're going to do carpet to do the same lot number, same lot, because there is a difference when they do make. You just number. get along with my wife so well. My God, I've heard these arguments. <laughs> we got to do it now. Absolutely. You start here, so, it's going to snowball. It's, that's room. exactly right. It just goes from one end to the other. There you go. It's like water pouring down. Yeah, if we do do it later, it's going to cost more. It didn't cost them later. Sure because they don't have to worry about it. Might as well. Okay. You made the motion. Who? who? Roger made the motion. Jay in a second. All in favor say aye. Get my name on this. Aye. Aye. I'll call on you, Kelly. That was quite a motion. Yeah. Or you. No, you can. I, I really don't have time. I have an election. She just wrote here. Whose room is that? I think that's all. All right. <laughs> Do we have? I think we would hold that. And do you have any more Can questions we? for this guy so far? Roger, do you have more questions for next time? They were kind of like your questions beforehand. I'll I'll read that. Let me see it quick. 
Just is, let me know and I can email it to him. That's what I'm saying. Anytime after Tuesday, I'll be fine. And don't forget to vote. I already did. Make your clerk happy. Pass the ballot. That's they're, they're broad enough that I can go from them. Okay. To specific. Cool. You might. Family crisis centers have a walk run. Just FYI. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, uh, I guess we can adjourn and go into a workshop. Right? Okay. We're adjourned.